Hi guys, it is another fine 80 degree winter day here in the uh, collapse of global industrial civilization here in the <coughs> Point Lonesome Swamp deep in the oasis of freedom here on this uh, lovely Saturday morning. That would make it, I believe, December 11th, 2021. And uh, my little dog and I have to get ready for our pile of fish date later today. Wish me luck on that. But before I head off to find love in the Point Lonesome Swamp, do what I do, try to do every Saturday. I'm maybe hit every other Saturday. And this is our weekly hopium, apocalyptic hopium roundup <coughs> where I just go through the mainstream media and my email box for more examples of how uh, I think is, is the hopium phase <coughs> is it is it is somewhere between denial and bargaining just these absolutely laughable attempts to try to turn this freight train around uh, <laughs> at this point in the trajectory of the collapse. So why don't you go traject yourself towards a squirrely like that. And uh, we're actually, we're going to start off well, I guess for people who understand uh, how screwed the blue planet is, we're going to start off at the red with the red planet. Yes, <coughs> since if you've given up on the uh, on <coughs> any way to make the blue planet habitable, how about figuring out a way to make Mars habitable? What are the uh, future Martians? hoping to do with their new planet. There is a new plan that could make life on Mars more of a possibility. The plan is built around the idea of giving Mars an artificial magnetosphere. The planet currently lacks a strong magnetic field and creating one could be the only option to help make life on Mars a stronger possibility. Of course, there is a lot to unpack the idea, but if successful, it would make the planet more habitable. Yes. <coughs> anyway. But one of the first things we have to look to do is look into creating a safe environment for humans to live and thrive on Mars. While there are plans to terraform, this is a whole nother level, if we want to make life on Mars a reality, we're going to need a magnetosphere like the one we have here on Earth. Yes. Uh, Oh, God. A strong magnetic field uh, offers more protection. With one in place, we could then start to build colonies and expand our exploration of the planet. Unfortunately, accomplishing this is much easier said than done. Okay, but uh, for those of us who have not quite yet given up on saving our own planet uh, and keeping the planet we already have a magnetosphere on, uh, for those of us still clinging to some ridiculous notion that we're going to save this planet, we have to deal with this pesky climate change. So HuffPost is asking the question, should we electrocute the oceans 
to curb climate change. That is one idea. We're just going to electrocute the ocean. Yes. <clears throat> Some of the nation's leading ocean and climate scientists are calling on the U.S. government to invest up to $1.3 billion in research on human interventions that could boost the ocean's ability to suck up planet warning, warming carbon dioxide in the coming decades. Yes, the recommendation is part of a new 300-page National Academy of Sciences report that explores six, six techniques for accelerating ocean CO2 removal and storage. Yes, okay, here we go. How about the crazy idea of restoring degraded ocean ecosystem, you know, like those dead zones. First, we'll bring the dead zones back to life. Then, of course, I've mentioned this one before, large-scale seaweed farming. We've been hearing for years dumping nutrients like iron and phosphorus in the oceans to promote plankton growth. And do not forget jolting seawater with electricity to make it less acidic. Yes. Uh, the report outlines known risks and benefits as well as costs and scalability in order to provide policymakers with a framework for deciding the next steps. Quoting one of these uh, mad scientists, uh, all of these approaches have some combination of trade-offs and there are substantial knowledge gaps. D, 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 I think it was Brother JJ sending me this one. MIT scientist says we are on the brink of a mass extinction event. I know we're in the middle of a mass extinction event. There is nothing on the brink about it inching towards extinction. Nope, we are barreling towards extinction. There is no question things are a bit dire right now when it comes to climate change. But there is some good news. An MIT scientist says we're on the brink of a mass extinction. Well, just kidding. That's horrible news. Yes. Daniel Rothman, a professor of geophysics at MIT, has spoken about his prediction of a new mass extinction event. His, he reiterated his Cassandra concerns in a recent interview saying that human disruption to the carbon cycle will ultimately result in calamity. Yes. And, uh, but don't worry, we can still stop the apocalypse. Luckily, there is some, 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 hope. Luckily, there is some. Global leaders are beginning to take the issue of climate change more seriously than ever before. Yes, international efforts such as the recent COP26 are a big step in the right direction. Yes. And there have already been some rudimentary steps towards geoengineering. Yes. Hmm. 
So, concludes Dr. Rothman. One would like to see more, but good people are doing their best. There you go. Good people are doing their best to stop the apocalypse. <clears throat> Let's see. Uh, this one. Uh, <laughs> how one company keeps wind turbine blades out of landfills. <clears throat> Until recently, wind turbine blades were nearly impossible to recycle. But now, one co <laughs> guys, this is not the onion. This is Business Insider. But now, one company is shredding the blades, you know, from these uh, from these windmills that wear out after about 20 years. Uh, one company is shredding the blades so they can be used as fuel to make cement. But is this the best way to deal with a growing waste problem? Yes, the growing waste problem of used wind turbine blades. Uh, <laughs> can't think of a can't think of a better way to uh, to use that growing waste problems of these mountains of uh, windmill blades piling up than to grind them up to make fuel to make more cement you, you know to make more bases for wind turbines. Anyway, guys, I, again, I am not making this up. All right, what does this guy, uh, what's his name? Kayo uh, the rich dad, poor dad author Robert Kayo says crash and depression are coming. But here are six simple ways you can get rich from the fallout. Yes, you know, I've been saying for how many years uh, there are all kinds of ways to uh, make money off of the apocalypse. Uh, crash and depression coming, Kioski tweeted earlier this week. Time to get richer after fake inflation crashes. Be aware and take care. Yes. So what is he buying? I am buying more gold, silver, Bitcoin, Ethereum, rental real estate, and of course oil. And uh, now about these precious metals, uh, I speak from the hard won experience. If you're buying, uh, if you're buying precious metals to uh, get rich off of the apocalypse, I do highly advise you bury it a little deeper than I buried my 1,200 ounces of physical silver, especially if you bury it on some of your rental real estate. Uh, I do not suggest combining uh, investing in physical metals with rental real estate. I, I tried that combination and uh, it was not the best investment of my life. Uh, you might want to think of somewhere else to bury your uh, your treasure than uh, in the backyard of a house you're renting to a total stranger. This is just some investment advice from your depressed collapsitarian. But uh, you know, I was just talking. We were just talking in our Manga Bay 
Roundup rant yesterday about how corals, coral reefs all over the planet are on the brink of collapse, I would say again, in full grown collapse. And uh, we have been hearing this one for years and they are still dragging this one out. Scientists to plant lab grown coral in reefs dying from climate change. Scientists are attempting to breed super corals, super corals to better withstand the impacts of climate change. The corals raised in laboratories are set to be planted in the ocean off Hawaii to see how they survive in nature. Kira Hughes, a University of, of Hawaii researcher said, quote, assisted evolution. This is called humans playing God. You know, we have done such a good job of playing God with the planet so far. <clears throat> assisted evolution started out as this kind of crazy idea that you could actually help something change and allow it to survive better because it is changing. But we have to intervene in order to make a change for coral reefs to survive into the future, close quote. There you go. Uh, let's wish them all luck in saving the planet. Uh, all right. The program to develop hardier corals <clears throat> in Hawaii has been supported by Microsoft co-founder Paul Allen. Researchers have faced accusations of playing God by tampering with reefs. But Madeline Van Oppen of the Australian Institute of Marine Sciences said humans had, quote, already intervened. Yeah, we've already intervened, you know, putting corals on the brink of obliteration. And, quote, all we're trying to do is repair the damage, you know, that humans have caused. So, uh, <laughs> guys, I could actually go on with this, but it, it is uh, getting to be a gorgeous day out here in the uh, collapse of global industrial civilization, and I've heard just about enough of this crap to last me till next Saturday. And uh, anyway, get out there and enjoy electrocuting the ocean, building a new magnetosphere around the planet Mars, crushing up mountains of worthless wind turbine blades to make more cement to save the planet. And don't forget to bury your physical silver deeper while you still can. Bye, guys.